hey, so welcome back to this random table where I fix stuff. So underneath this cover is an IBM Electromatic. This is the first, um, first successful electric typewriter. I think this particular one was made in the 40s. Um, get a better view of it here. See the keyboard here, we have shift, shift lock, tab, shift key, carriage return, backspace, tab, set and clear. Um, let's see what's this, margin release, and then stencil out. This comes off. See the type bars there? So, I guess I even spot it international on the older machines. Patent here, you can see the ribbon, of course, is, you know, busted. It's interesting wheel layout. Usually the wheels, the uh, ribbon wheels are, you know, um, horizontally. These are vertical. Um, hopefully I can find a ribbon to replace this. So that's basically your top-down view. Um, see the keys are all locked. That's because the power switch is off. This is a power switch here. When you turn it on, then the the keys release, but they're all locked when it's off. And the reason for that, let's see underneath, my tripod will cooperate. We'll be able to stand this up. So you can see these here are the um, the key triggers. So you can see how these ones, these three here and these two here, uh, look different than the rest of them. So basically, the way that this works is this is the motor down here, and this turns. You can see that I turn the motor. This whole rubber drum turns, and when you press a key, it um, releases these. So they move just a little bit, and then there's a rough surface on here that engages against this rubber drum to drive the keys forward. So if you press a key when it's off, it's going to release this, but um, then the key's not going to actually act actuate until you turn it back on next time. So if you accidentally press you know, a whole bunch of keys when it's off, and then you turn it on, all of the keys are going to try and press at the same, uh, all the um, type load are going to try and lift at the same time, which is not a good thing. So let's see if I can reset these manually. Which I think you can actually. Maybe. Maybe not. So I'm gonna have to look into how to do that, but I wanna reset these so that they don't all take off when I turn it on. So let me look into that and then we'll see if we can power this up. Okay, so I think I've got all those into a, um, a state where they're not going to activate when I turn this on. So let's plug it in and turn it on and see what happens, if anything. And some of them seem to be activated, but it's not so good. Let's check that out. Sure stuff like that. Let's try that again.
with duos with these. Only the middle ones too. The outside ones seem to be just fine. So where's those middle ones? So let me take a look underneath these and figure out what the deal is with those. Okay, so I think I might have gotten some of the um, keys backwards from what I thought they should be. They're all going underneath. I think I had some of them in the wrong direction. When I thought I was putting them in the, uh, the unactivated direction, it was actually the activated direction. But I think I fixed that now, so let's see. Better. So let's see if we hit a key. Well, doing something. It's not exactly returning to unactivated though. So I have to figure out what the deal is with that. That's two keys. Okay. So we've got to figure out why they're not um, unlatching. That's interesting. So I think the problem with this is just that the rubber on that drum is not soft enough to grab the keys or grab those, um, what do you call them, lockers. So basically, I can show this here. Basically what happens is when you press a key, it releases a trip on one of these rockers. Now you can see how there's a smooth spot right here and the rest of it is kind of rough right here. And the, what it does is it trips these so they rotate just a little bit so that the rough part is supposed to get grabbed by this roller, which then you know pulls this back and throws the key forward. But I think that this rubber is just not you know soft enough anymore. It's pretty hard to grab the um, the rough part here uh, well enough to drive it. So I think what I'm going to do is see if I can put some lacquer thinner on this to see if that'll maybe soften up at least the auto layer a little bit and you know clean up any crap that might be stuck on here. So I'll use some lacquer thinner and see if I can see if that'll help. Okay so I cleaned that down with uh, lacquer thinner. I'm not sure if that'll help. It doesn't seem to make it any softer but yeah, it'll just take some of the uh, you know the this I say like glaze but like you know where sometimes when rubbing a hard rubber and it gets all shiny. I uh, took all that off, so maybe it'll have a little bit more traction now, but we will see. Well, not really. Still not, not enough momentum to turn that, because it has to turn that little rocker all the way around to the next smooth spot. So it looks like it's getting almost there, but not quite to the next uh, spot where it's going to release. Set that and then try a different one. So that's this right here. So you can see it has to go all the way around and then release there, and now it's deactivated. So it looks like it gets part of the way, but then not the whole way. You can see it already kind of wore a spot in there, but I think this is going to be the main problem. So I'm not sure if there's something else I can use to soften this up, but I'll have to see this back down and then try a different key just for fun. And we're definitely gonna have to figure out what to do about that. I think I like hit Z again. Yeah. So now turn it you know, all the way around to the next. There's not enough friction I guess so I guess I'm gonna have to Try again, maybe somehow try and soak it in. See, it, it turns it some of the way, but doesn't have enough moment, enough strength to go all the way around. See how it's uh, kind of worn in there a little bit again. So, let me play some more with this, see if I can figure out, you know, if I have to soak, soak it in lacquer thinner for a little bit, but see if I can figure out something I can do with this. You know, I could just sand it a little bit and make it rougher, then it might grab better, but I'll have to see. It is a nice, uh, Thick layer on there, but I'm not sure. Like I'm not sure if you could, you know, just sand a little bit of the outside off if that would help or not. That would be soft and dirty. So let me play with that for a little bit and see what I can figure out. Okay, so some more a little more cleaning with black up thinner on that rubber thing, and I just had one key and it worked. Let's see if another one will work. Almost. 
so it seems to be getting a little bit better. And uh, not so much for that one, though. So that key is still not quite right. Oh, we said that and see if carriage return works. So that's this one here, not going all the way around. Okay, but let's just see if carriage return will work now. Because I think that is not running directly off that shaft. So if you look on this side of the machine, I think this is the carriage return. You can see it has the string that goes up all the way to the carriage. And this spools up as I move the carriage you know, closer to home. So I'm thinking that this is going to be some sort of clutch and this is going to release and then wind this back up. Um, and hopefully it'll release the clutch when it gets to the end and not break anything. But I guess we will find out. Get my hand on the power switch just in case. Yeah, you can see it's spinning in there. Can you see that? This, the inside the outer drum there is spinning, so let's just see what happens. Hey, it worked. Cool. Maybe it didn't release it. No, it did. Space bar is not working for some reason. That works. So the keys work, the space bar doesn't work. Okay. Let's take a look at that. So the keys seem to be getting somewhat better, but I'm um, still going to need more work to get that. Yeah, uh, shaft fully functional for some of the keys. Yeah, some of the keys don't work at all. But it seems to be getting better and carriage return works, so that's a good sign. So I think um, more uh, lacquer thinner and possibly some sanding on that uh, rubber shaft, and hopefully it will work successfully. Okay, so um, I went over with that uh, rubber drum a couple times with uh, just some Scottish plate and a lacquer thinner. And then I put a new ribbon in, a nice black ribbon here. Uh, so let's see what we get. So I'm going to pull the ribbon off there. The shift doesn't seem to do anything now. This whole thing is just. Ooh, maybe. Hmm. Let me check that out real quick because I think before when I turn it on, it had moved somewhere. You know, it's not moving. I'm not quite sure which thing activates that. Um, no, it has a little hole in it. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. There's a little. Let's just see what we have. Plug this back in and turn it on and see what happens. Shift doesn't do anything now. So right now it's in shift mode. Okay, so now it's out of shift mode, right? Yes, that's very light. Is my stencil mode engaged? Yes, okay. So stencil is on. Shift still doesn't do anything now. And my ribbon just flew out for some reason. It's not very nice. I still don't have it loaded properly. Just sit down here. Okay, yeah, something's up with this ribbon. Let me see if I can figure that out. Okay, so slight ribbon rerouting. Let's see what happens this time. Oops, you plug it in. Are we getting nothing yet? Where is it? It's not working. Oh, there it went. Interesting. Let's 
space works. I'll look into that. Anyway, let's just see what happens. Shift, still nothing. up with a carriage return. The key doesn't work anymore. Does backspace work? Backspace works. The carriage return is completely toast now. There it goes. Oh, that's weird. Um, so it did type, though not really well. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. So... Shows up with shift though. Space works now at least. Well, it did for a minute. Arrow return is messed up. So let's see what keys work and which one is down. So there's no one key. This one doesn't seem to do anything. I mean, it does, but it doesn't point. He's pretty light. Oh, there it goes. Carriage return. That's useful. This is pretty light. This seems pretty light. Twice now. Oh, I'm kind of sticky. Down doesn't even want to hit the paper at all. Weird. So it's not, you know, quite right yet. Space stopped working again. Space is actually triggered off that drum as well. Um, kind of interesting because usually space on even on electric calculator, space is you know, mechanically connected to the carriage release thing. So we're just you know space is a carriage one, space like a regular keyboard. But on this one, space is, is driven off the drum. That's kind of interesting. So everything seems to trigger now, just not very well. Of the carriage return either. So if I hit the clutch over here manually, then it goes, but the key for some reason decided to stop working. Same with space. Let's try again. There are no spaces. I don't know what to do with that. So you can see, not all the keys want to register F to register either. Now it's registering twice. So I think someone cleaning on that drum is going to be necessary. Now all these register. Half works good. That doesn't work very well. The numbers seem to work. He seems kind of iffy. Those carriage return. Okay, so we need to figure out what happened to shift. Uh, what happened to carriage return? And what happened to space? And uh, some of these other keys are not working, but uh, definitely getting better at least. 
Okay, so this is the bottom. Um, if you lean it back, it'll just lean against the carriage and see in this position. You see the motor down here, and then it has a little piece of like, uh, almost looks like gas hose, um, like you'd have in your car for this extra thick uh, hose is, you know, that they have that's uh, impermeable to gas with the cotton or the string you need in there. Anyway, this actually is like a dampener, I'm guessing, between the motor and the gearbox here. It looks like the, this is going to be a worm gear across the top that then drives the gear across the shaft here. And you can see the um, carriage turn clutch over here, and this is the main rubber thing. And you can see, notice over here, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but see how there's like two lines here? So that's how it gets polished when these things are sliding on this. So this one right here is the spacer, and this one right here is the shift one. And I'm thinking this one's probably tab. This one right here is the carriage return, and actually not quite sure, this is probably backspace. Um, and these in the middle are all the keys. Um, so, see if I do this and then press space, usually it'll go, see how that release there, and then if I turn this by hand, So get close, but then there it goes. I think that when it's um, you know at full speed, this is going you know too fast for it to get traction. I guess I don't know. Uh, shifting. If I hold, if I hold down the shift key, you'll see it releases, and now the um, carriage has dropped down. You can tell that by if you saw this little spring down here move. Sure, if you can see that now with a little swing right there that uh, drops, that changes position. You see, it pops up or pops down. So right now it's down. Now if I let go of it again, you see that it re-engages, or it should re-engage. It's slipping, but and then it pops the um, the basket back up. So that's how the shift key works. As you can see, both space and shift are sliding, so I'm going to see if I can do some more sanding and cleaning on there. Um, other than that, hopefully this will be okay. As far as oiling the motor, I'm not quite sure how you're even supposed to get at it. Um, for the front bearing, I just dropped some oil down in there, because you can kind of see the front of the, the brass pushing there. But as far as the back, I have no idea how you're even supposed to get at it to oil it. So, um, As far as this gearbox box here, it looks like there's a plug here, but that looks like it's going to be the end of the worm gear, so I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to either oil or grease that either. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure about that. You notice that up here in the basket area, these springs here, um, some of them do seem to be missing. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened to them, but it doesn't seem to affect the operation. I mean, the all the keys as you saw before, the keys seem to work pretty well. Although unless those are the keys that aren't um, pressing hard enough, but you think that that wouldn't affect that. And these are probably return springs, not, not um, and would not, wouldn't have anything to do with driving forward. Um, there is an adjustment on the back of the motor for darkness, and it seems like all that, that does is adjust the motor speed. Um, so I can try turning that up and see if that helps with the keys that don't seem to want to make impressions, but these I'm thinking are return springs, but all the keys seem to be turned fine, so I really don't know what happened to the ones that I'm missing, but anyway, let me see if I can get that cleaned up. Um, as far as the wiring, uh, the wire comes in the side here, and then it goes down to, it looks like these boxes down here, if you can see them. So like these boxes down here are probably you know, interference suppression capacitors or something. And then the switch is right here uh, for the main power switch. So that's what the bottom looks like. So it turns out that thing actually comes out. It's just like a rubber drum. Um, can you hear how hard the rubber is though? So, yeah. Um, anyway. If necessary, you know, you probably find someone to redo the rubber coating on here. 
Um, I'd imagine there are people that we do typewriter patterns, and I mean, this basically is just a typewriter pattern, really, just that the ends are different. This, this end has a post that goes in. So let's put some oil on that, just because. That's nice and oiled. And then this goes in. You can see it's got a, a slot in that, and then there's a post on here. So you just gotta push this out of the way. Actually, I don't know what this is for. Oh, this one. Anyway, you push this out of the way. And then line this up over here. Maybe. And it should, I think, there, latch in. Now it's back in. So let me just go over that one more time. I'd like to finish to clean off. Looks like I got some. I can point to something on it there. So let me just clean that off one more time. And we'll try it again. Okay, so if we continue, I just want to have a little word on the um, uh, appearance of this typewriter. Obviously, this the typewriter is the, not in the best condition. See all of the paint's worn off the front. You know, some of the paint's flaking off here. Not sure, there might be some rust there or something. Um, and the keys are pretty bad too. Now, some of these could be cleaned up, like probably shift, backspace. The red ones, you know, the letters are still there, they're just dirty. Um, and these ones, however, you know, some of them are so worn that the, uh, the letters are actually wearing off. If you look at, you know, N here, there's almost no, you know, no even, um, you know, inset where the N would have been. So you always pretty much the same way. There's a little bit of inset at the top, but the bottom is, you know, almost worn smooth. Same with I. So, you know, some is never going to be perfect. I mean, if you want to get it perfect, you'd have to repaint and then of course when you do that you'd have to somehow replace all the decals and everything. The electromatic there it says international on the uh, the paper holder and then on the lid here it says IBM. So I doubt you'd be able to find decals like that so you'd probably have to make them which I'm really not going to do. So um, as long as I can get this working uh, you know, decently well. I'm probably satisfied with that. You know, maybe repaint the body, but you know, I mean, what's the point really when the rest of it, like this piece, you can't repaint because you can't get the decal, but anyway. So, yeah, don't expect this to be perfect by the end of this video. We're just gonna see if we can get it working. So, I put the, um, the rubber drum back in and clean it with lacquer thinner. So now, See if we can type something here. See if shift works. See if shifted. See how it dropped down. Now it should pop back up. There we go. That didn't work. Space works. That didn't work. So, still some keys are not quite working properly. I'm not quite sure why that would be. We can try it again. Now that's why I just hit it a little bit harder. F doesn't want to work though. Now it did. Now space gave out. Oh, there it went. Why is my space set all the way to like 500? I don't need 500 line spaces. Anyway, uh, getting a little bit better. It's like he doesn't want to work. Entirely. 
So we're not quite sure what the deal is with P. So sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm not quite sure if that's you know issues with it slipping on the drum or issues with resistance somewhere else. So that might require further investigation. Try this again. And space is giving out again. And the space is giving out again. So you might need to figure something else out for that. Um, bar, you know, maybe you sand it some more, something. I really don't want to get the rubber replaced. That's going to be really expensive, and this machine really isn't worth it in the state that it's in. Whoops, now it's not moving at all. What happened here? So for some reason it's not. Let me reset that space key, space bar. So the space bar has been reset. Now it's space. So definitely we need to do some more work on that rubber thing, you know, maybe sand it uh, more aggressively along the whole length or something. We'll have to see, but I mean, that seems to be the only the real problem with it is that. Everything else seems like it'll work just fine. No space works. Oops, not quite. So our space, but I didn't reset. That's what happened when it doesn't, you know, all the way reset. No, oh, it looks like it reset. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Yeah, space is not happy. Interesting that when I turn it by hand, then it goes through, but when it's running, it doesn't go through. Let's see if it'll work now. See, I think it, it did it, but it didn't reset. Yeah, see, it just, just right on the edge, but if I turn it by hand, then it'll reset. It's interesting. Now, that's didn't work. See, so you can have space. That's not going to go at all. Just not, not cooperating. F doesn't want to work either, like at all. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And then when space doesn't reset, doesn't want to space afterwards either. Right, so yeah, so let's see, what keys don't work? Power return doesn't work anymore. There it goes. So I've got less line spaces at least. So does dash work yet? No, dash doesn't work. Y doesn't quite work. Yeah, F is messed up. Semicolon doesn't want to work. Quote doesn't want to work. Comma doesn't want to work right. Look at this period. So just for fun, let's turn the motor speed up. 
and see if that helps out. Well, not really. Doesn't really help Y either. See if it helps quote. Yeah, yeah, it helps quote. Help semicolon too. Help period. Comma. So it makes some difference, but F is F is messed up, but it's all space. Yeah, now space works. Sort of. Did work. Yeah, well. Did we go any higher? No, it must have been. Turn it back down. So if you turn the motor stuff, it'll make a little bit of difference, but not completely fix it. So we're gonna have to do some more work on that on that bar there. Let's see. So it's definitely polished here where space has been rubbing. It's polished a little bit where carriage return has been rubbing. And there's like one here and looks like one there that's also been rubbing. So for now I think the only thing I can really do is try and you know, rough it up a little bit more and see if I can, you know, get down to a place where the rubber is a little bit more fresh. Um, it's definitely improving it, but we're not quite to the fully functional area yet. So, see if I can keep making progress on this.